This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? It's good to see you. It's time for the ramble. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm the host, and uh, we're uh, we're going to be here till midnight. Okay, a little bit later in this uh, hour, about a half hour, twenty five minutes from right now, we're going to be uh, talking with people uh, from all over the country on our citizens panel, which is not just one person talking at a time, but ugh, God, one night we had twelve other people talking. That got a little out of hand. But that's later. Right now, uh, on video, here, one of your favorite comics that I ever had on my radio sh- show in San Francisco. I mean, this guy was uh, a major, major hit. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well, we'll introduce him right here. Ladies and gentlemen, staring you right in the face there is the old Rube, Bob Rubin. Hi there, Rube. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm here in my little box, and I just get to say hi. <laughs> Would you care to show us your apartment? Well, I don't know if we have I feel, time. I feel like this is, I don't know if you remember, remember uh, Edward R. Murrow, and he used to do a show called, um, uh, where he used to interview people in their homes. And he said, Would you show us around your home? <laughs> yeah, man. Person okay. to person, yeah. Sure, why not? Hold on, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, show oh, us around thanks. your home. Okay. This is the living room. Okay. This is the kitchen. <laughs> this is my music room. Yeah. And this is my bedroom. Boy, Boy. do you make that? When's the last time you made that bed? <laughs> oh man, I don't even know. Huh? I, I don't even know. It is a clean sheet on there, though. That's pretty cool. There is a clean sheet on there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Where and where do you do the wash? I guess you have a washing machine in that apartment. No, not in the apartment. No, <laughs> the the, uh, the washing machine is in this uh, room uh, off of the carport. Yeah. But it's hard to get in there and get your wash done because there are two homeless people living in there now. Uh, really? Yeah, and you know, um, you know, I, it's the funniest thing, man. These two guys, and they've got little uh, camping chairs, and they they've got uh, they've got you know fancy phones, man. They got nicer phones than I do, you know, the iPhone or smartphone or something, and. Yeah. Uh, they just sit out back smoking weed, <laughs> and um, they, they have their phones plugged. They unplug the washing and dryer uh, so they can plug in their phones. Oh, and, really? And and, uh, and and sometimes they're sitting in the building because, like, if it's too hot to sit out in the driveway, they'll be sitting in the building on top. There's only one washer, and there's only one dryer, and uh, they'll, they'll be sitting on top of that smoking weed, and... Uh, I'm like, uh, you guys, you guys, you guys don't live here, right? They go, oh, you know me, man. You know me. My girl lives here. My girl lives here. I go, you don't have a girlfriend here, man. (laughs) I've never seen you out here with anybody. Yeah. So that's where the washing machine is? Yeah. I figure, uh, I don't want to show everything all at once. I figure on our next interview, I could show you that. (laughs) I I know what I'll do on my next interview uh, directly across from... Uh, from the washroom is my truck. Now, I want to bring up a few interesting things here. Yeah. First of all, you just saw what a wonderful house I have. Yeah, this is, it's uh, it's almost as big as mine. Almost, yeah. Yeah, it's about 2,500 square feet, right? Yeah, it's about 2,500. I don't know if the feet are squared. I think that's the problem. I think I got ripped off. I don't know. I hate to say this, Rube, but the last time I lived in an apartment like yours, I was like uh, 21, <laughs> or maybe even younger than that. Hey, you know what? Hey, it's an interesting thing. I understand why you hated to say that. 
<laughs> now, yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. We, on our next trip, on our next journey, not only will I show you the laundry room where the homeless people live, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll show you my truck. Oh, okay. Now, here's the interesting thing. My truck... I haven't driven in six months because the battery's dead. Mm -hmm. But the tags are five years old on it. Now, you may say, well, you better get those tags fixed. But the tags are so old that the color has come back around. Oh, really? Yeah. 2017, the tags are green. 2012, yeah. the tags are green. So I got to get the battery fixed. So I can go ahead and take advantage of that driving because you'd have to be a real stickler to pick that up, you know, because like I said, it's the same color. So to actually see the year, you'd have to be a real stickler. But the only reason I'm bringing all of this up, all of this, the tour, the laundry room, the truck, is just got to say one more time, comedy has been very, very good to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going. I'm going to. Actually, I'm going to change the picture here slightly on you. So, uh, so there's a bar on the side because really he's only coming to us in square picture today. I don't blame you, man. You don't have wide screen on your on your computer, do you? Put up a picture, of Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> it's, I. I uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have wide screen. Yeah. So, so that's why there's a bar, folks, on the side of the picture, which I tried oh, right, to eliminate right. earlier, and then I just decided, what the hell, you know? I'd love to get widescreen wide installed. How do I do that? I don't know. I, I, I would have to probably come out there and show you. You go into Skype, and then you go into video, and I don't know. There may be a, a thing there to make it wider. Uh, well, come on out. You see, I got plenty of room. Yeah, can I stay with you? Yeah. Where do I sleep? I'll give you the bed. I'll sleep on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Look, the last time I stayed in a place like this, I was 57. And how old are you now? Uh, 57. <laughs> Comedy's been really, really... I think comedy has been shitty to you. It has been. Now, oh, there's that word again. What? Has been. Ha <laughs> well, you know, no, uh, hey, as one has been to another. Come on. No, no. You, no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a has been, and you could argue that, well, that's better than being a never was. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a has been. I, I didn't come here to argue. Come on, man. Let's not argue. Let's live. Really? Let's really, really live. <laughs> you know what? The uh, I, I got some irons in the fire that are stoked a bright, bright orange boy. Okay, because you know, I did the special. Yeah. And that's complete. It's done. Yeah. Looks beautiful, man. I'll have to send you a copy. Oh, please do. I want to see it. Yeah, I'll send you a copy. And uh. But, you know, I got it. I'm going to get it on a platform, a streaming platform, you know, and I've got one right now. Keep your fingers crossed. You've heard of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's looking pretty good. Gas Station TV. Have you heard of them? No. Yeah. Well, you know, when you pull into the pump. And <laughs> yeah, and there's that screen there. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's looking pretty good, but I don't want to jinx it. So I don't want to say anything more about it, but keep your fingers crossed for me. And also a uh, Coinstar. It's a big deal that might be happening with Coinstar. What's that? Well, you know that mi 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 big square machine that counts your change? It's yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, they're starting to get into original programming. <laughs> Oh, man, after all these years, you still make me laugh. Uh, uh, you know, grocery store checkout stands, I think, have some monitors now. I think you might be able to get on those. Yeah, we're going to that. And they're going to have uh, uh, There's a lot of competition between Coinstar and, and the cashier monitors because they are in 
both in a store, you know. Yeah, and they're kind of competitors. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So oh, I might have a, pro a price for going over at Ralph's or something like that, you know, which would be interesting. Yeah. But at least I won't have to stand in line anymore. People will know me. That's right. They say, do you have any form of identification? You can just point to the screen. That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's my comedy special up there. Oh, let me just go count this, get this change counted, and I'll be right back to pay for this food. <laughs> One time I went in there with, uh, I went into Ralph's to go to the coin store with uh, a big bag of change. I don't know how much money was it. It ended up being like $95. Yeah. But uh, you're standing there in the middle of Ralph's doing this, and it takes forever with that kind right. of change. Right. And I just remember, <laughs> I was like massaging these quarters and dimes and nickels. So they'd go down the chute. Yeah. So they so they wouldn't clog up. And I remember I, I'm massaging them, and and every now and then I'd look over my back at everybody else, and I go, "You kidding me? I own this town." Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, so what's what's happening with the special? I mean, are aside from these uh, what we consider very uh, lucrative uh, possibilities? Well, uh, I can tell you what's really going on. It's not that funny though. Is it sad? Oh no! Oh no. okay, all right. Well yeah, then, we're then, gonna, then we're gonna, this is what we're gonna try to get it on uh, either. Either uh, we're going to Netflix, we're going to Hulu, we're going to uh, Amazon Prime, and we're going to CISO. Yeah, CISO is a new one, and it's 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 out there. You know, it's on Roku. I know that. Well, CISO has all these British shows, so I figure, man, it might be the right audience for me if I get it on there. Yeah. CISO, they have every episode of uh, Monty Python. They have every episode of The Young Ones. They have every episode of The Mighty Boosh. So, uh, yeah. And then they've got every episode of Saturday Night Live because it's a NBC Universal. I think Amy Poehler started it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, now here's my question to you. Um, yeah. uh uh, have any, have you, uh, do you have an agent out peddling this thing for you? No, I'm going to have the, the, the director. He's got a, a nice little film company with a bunch of good credits, and I, I think I think we're going to do it through him. We haven't gotten anybody yet, but I might, I may get an agent to try to do it, or I might just do it uh, with this film company, Santo Films. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you know, I have the... Have the complete package ready it's it, the complete package is ready to go as a matter of fact hang on one second ladies and gentlemen bob rubin has left the room i've already got promotional items he's oh uh, he's up in the attic now oh and here he is back again this is a nice tote bag oh oh yeah that was a, that was your uh, your uh, picture on your uh, money grabbing scheme thing yeah yeah it's yeah it's a nice it's a nice tote bag and I understand you're an avid golfer, so I'll send you one of these out. Yeah, what's that? Great place to great place to keep your tees and balls. Well, I know how to keep my balls. It's the tees that are the problem. What is that? I told. I just showed it to you. Tote bag. Oh, oh, the tote bag. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you there was something extra beside the tote bag. Yeah, there is. Bob has now gone down into the basement. He's in the uh, den right now. Now he's uh, going through the playroom, his home theater, his home theater. He's going through the home theater. Yeah, I just went through all those places, and look how long it took me. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're very, you know something? You're very spry for your age. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Last time I lived in a dump like this, I was 57. <laughs> hey, look at this. This is a refrigerator magnet. I'll send one to you. Same picture. A refrigerator? I'll put that on my refrigerator. Okay, cool. I'll send one. To you know, you. I don't think I have anything on my refrigerator. Uh, my wife used to like having uh, pictures of cows and stuff on the refrigerator, but she didn't anymore. And you what, have what, what what I had from California, but I threw them out, were actually cow spots, and you could put them with magnets, and you could put them on the refrigerator and make your whole refrigerator look like a cow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, now you're seeing cow spots. Yeah. So what what is an average day for Bob Rubin? Well, 
it's kind of like this is like a, what I would say a segment of an average day. Yeah. I do a lot of press. Yeah. A lot of interviews. Yeah. And then uh, I like to stay in shape. So uh, I might go out to the laundry room and yell at the homeless people. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, because you walk out there and you walk back, and then uh, when you're yelling, you're gesticulating, so that works out the upper body. Yeah. And then, um... Yeah? Well, then I just, uh, sometimes I'll spe- I like to spend some time in my uh, music room li- listening to classical music. It really soothes my my head it's kind of like my meditation yeah but you, you knew that about me i did that you're you're a very meditative kind of cool uh into into uh otherworldly godlike stuff very metaphysical person i think everybody's always known that about me yeah do you have a mantra uh yes i do uh, uh would you could you share it with us i mean is it a big secret some people keep their mantras secret well I, i'll do a little bit of it for you. i'm not gonna do the whole thing how's that okay just do whatever whatever makes you feel calm relaxed and benign okay why 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 and that's just the first part of it and 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 how does the second can you give us a little hint as to how the second part of it goes in the next episode oh okay can't do it all you know we can't, come on. We can't do this all at once i'm segmenting myself yeah. So it's so I mean so you, that's your average day in uh, in LA? Well, no, then I go on um uh, I go on a lot of meetings and it's weird people they're usually not expecting me. <laughs> but I go. But you go. Yeah, I go. And uh then the other day I had lunch with Nicole Kidman. Yeah. That's not a typical day. Yeah, uh, you see Nikki a lot. Every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we still reminisce about it. it was it uh, eighteen years ago? We made Moulin Rouge. Uh, I played the little fella. I don't know if that people saw me. You in played that, the but... little tiny midget guy. Yeah, I played the little fella. But, but I, I don't, Rube, I don't... Rube, you're like six foot three or something, right? Yeah, but no. But they had one of those things where you. you you're down on your knees and they put the shoe at the end of your knee. Yeah. One of those deals, man. Yeah. That's an old guy. In other words, you were playing you were playing Toulouse Latrec. That's the guy's name, yeah, Toulouse. Yeah, yeah a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, and they think that the Boondock Saints movie was my only movie role, but I actually did But that was Boondock Saints two. All Saints Day, yeah. I did yeah. that one. And I did um some uh, Rob Schneider epics. Yeah, Moulin Rouge, but I don't, you know. So I saw Nikki the other day, man. We had some lunch, and the food was gorgeous, as the Aussies say. Yeah. What else do I do? Uh, uh, I went to the mental, the Hollywood Mental Health Building. <laughs> You know what? That's the only building in this town where I've ever walked in, and they said, "You're perfect. Don't change." <laughs> is there so, is there really a mental health building there? Oh well, yeah, within walking distance. Really? There's actually several of them, which shows you what this town does to people who want to get into acting. <laughs> I uh, this is this may sound sound strange to you, but in New York on Twenty Third Street is something. It's like called a like a. Either it's like it's not it's not like an old folks home. It's a home for like indigent people. Yeah. And, and and believe it or not, out on the door they have a sign that says no menus. On the door it has a sign that says no menus. No menus. Yeah. What the hell, what the hell does that, that mean? That means man? don't leave menus on the on in the front door. Oh, you know, right, right. Yeah. Uh, like all these poverty-stricken people are going to be able to eat your food, you idiot. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Here's what I've often wondered. And, and Rube, Rube, since you are uh, just an absolutely insightful human being, because when I want to insight, who do I talk to? Me. You're my, you're my guru. 
Yeah, I'm your at, go-to at, guru. Yeah. W- w- have you ever been in an elevator? Oh, sure. Lots of times. And there are Braille. There's Braille. Right? To the numbers? To the numbers and underneath. Yeah. How do the blind people know they're there? I've actually seen Braille on a wall giving directions. And I'm thinking, if you're blind, how do you know the Braille is there? I don't know. Do they have Braille dar or something like that where they go, oh, yeah, there's Braille right over there? I don't understand it. That's a good question. I don't know. Now I'm freaking out, man. How do they know? And, and you know, I also wonder why. I mean, I, I'm not blind, and so I, I don't want to berate the blind. Uh, but I can make funny faces at them. Uh, you know. I think after riding up and down an elevator for hours, you check. No, but couldn't if you're blind, couldn't you say, hey, you know, because people will notice you're blind, could you push number eight for me? Oh, you think you're going to trust somebody to push number eight for you? Oh, you think they're going to push like number 12 and you're going to get off? Well, they're not going to push and number eight. And by the way, eight. let me, let me. A lot of people don't like to do that. It's bad hey, luck. Here, I'm going to ask you this question. You get into an elevator, right? You push a button. Some other people come in the elevator. They push the buttons to where they're going, right? Okay? Yeah. Now you're blind and you feel the Braille and you go, I'm going to floor eight, right? And you push the button. Yeah. How do you know when you're at floor eight? There's no announcement. There's no Braille telling you you're at floor eight. All right, welcome back to too much free time. You're on the air. Well, I mean, these are things I think about. I'm not working. I have time to think about stuff. <laughs> and, and these are the kinds of things I think about, you know. <laughs> I mean, hey, we, we say we want to help the handicap, but then we only go halfway. We let them push the button. We just don't let them know when they got there. Maybe blind people stay on elevators all day. I mean, maybe that's one of the hardships that we don't know about. Yeah. I don't know. Well, have you, have you ever seen a blind person in an elevator? Uh, well, I don't think I have. Yeah. If I were blind, I'd probably take the stairs because then I could count the floors I'm going up. You know, just a thought. So now that I've made fun of the blind, who else can we make fun out of? Hey, how about the gimps? Hey, how about the gimps? If there's any gimps out there, we'll take your calls right now. Yeah. So, um, uh, so your day is pretty much filled with Hollywood celebrities, uh, and then you bring them back to this place. Uh. Sometimes, sure, we, we'll hang out here and just, you know, have a discussion or uh, listen to music or uh, maybe I'll take them into the game room and, uh, you know, we'll enjoy a game of score four or something like that. And, uh, but you know, that's what people do in Los Angeles anyhow, you know, in, in the Hollywood community, they visit each other. Yeah. You know, if you go to somebody's house or they come to your house and, you play games and, and, and stuff like that. It's a good time. It's a good time. Well, there's no regret here. Yeah. There's nothing to look back on and say, gee, I fucked that up. There's no time for that. What's that called when you look back? Yeah, no regret. That's it's called it's called looking back at your life. Right. <laughs> this is like a uh, this is like a factory town and everybody So, so you to- don't have any regrets. Oh, no, no, no. There's no room. No room. You saw the place. There's no room for that. There's no room for regrets. You, you barely have to leave the room to change your mind. <laughs> Aha, as the old joke goes. Mm-hmm. See? Now I'm making fun of people who are finding it hard to find work. But since I'm one of them. Yeah, but I like... It's really nice. I've always kind of dreamed... Uh, you got to watch... You got to be careful what you dream for. Because I always dreamed of having a house where I could always see my bed and my refrigerator no matter where I was. <laughs> no matter where I was in that house, you know? Oh, so you man. Be careful. Yeah. But uh, I think that uh, I think that, that living here is, it's like I said, it's like Andy of Mayberry, really. It's like mm-hmm. Mayberry RFD or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows everybody. 
everybody's what? super friendly. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, we like to visit each other, you know. And uh, today I have to go to Ross and get a new pair of pants. I don't do that every day. Yeah. I do that about once every six years. Yeah. And I'm doing that today. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I went to, uh, I had my meeting at Coinstar about my comedy special. Yeah. I was there, I punched out a bowl of change, and I got enough for a pair of pants. <laughs> hey, listen, I just looked at the clock. Uh-oh. Yeah. We've run out of time. It's time to go. Yeah. But uh, why don't we do this again next week, okay? Oh, I'm up for it. Would you like to do it? Because I can't get enough of your of your amazing life. <laughs> Boy, I've really turned up the heat. Ladies and gentlemen... Lighten up, everybody. The old Rube was here. Bye. 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 This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Bob Rubin. And you may notice I, I, I made sure I'm wearing the same thing that I wore in the interview, which we did earlier today. So I don't know why. Now, next week, I, we did two interviews at the same time. We had a little... Um, little internet congestion uh, a little bit on that next interview you'll see next week but uh I, I i don't know if i can remember to wear this next week i'll try to remember so that i match oh boy is that what my life has come to anyway look this is the uh this is let me open up skype here let me open up the skypey thing there we go there's the skypey thing uh, and it's uh, we're uh, we're waiting for you to call, and we wait for people to give us a call. Uh, our, our various ways of getting a hold in touch with us, one of which is using Skype. That's the preferred method because we can see you. That's what Bob was using, for instance, when we were uh, interviewing him. And uh, I really uh, I really enjoy uh, uh, seeing people and being able to talk with them on that level. Okay, so uh, why don't you do that? Let me zoom the picture in a little bit, just so I'm a little more, yeah, you see? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, just wanted to do that uh, so that you could, you could see me a little closer than you would normally see me. Anyway, uh, what happens is we have a, this thing we call the citizens panel. And the citizen panel is a very simple a uh, little device we use to talk to people. We use Skype, and you go and you get this thing. It's called Skype, and you uh, you get it, and uh, you go to Skype.com, and they have it. And oh, hey, look, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's here here's something. Here's a little. This is uh, uh, special for us. Wait a minute. Let me uh, let me transition over to the screen. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, to Damian Chaplin. Howdy. To what do I, uh, uh, to what do, what honor do I uh, bestow? I forget it. What, why are you calling? Because <laughs> I have the evening free. I was, wasn't doing anything, and so I thought I'd stick around. I was listening to Rube and thought I'd call in too. Good memories, huh? Yeah. 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 Did you did you watch it on Facebook Live so you could see him? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, it's great. That was, that was actually the first time I'd done so. Yeah, it's great. It's great when I get these guys with a camera. You know, I get guys like Bubs, and Bubs doesn't. Uh, hell, he barely has a, a computer. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. We're being added to the group. Is uh, is uh, Phil Meyer? Here he comes. Everybody's readjusting. What? You're on top of each other. What is this? I've never had this before. Look at this, folks. Uh, are you there, Phil? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Phil's on top, and he's on the bottom. Now, I don't know how that happens. Well, it just depends, you know, who, who's in charge. Uh, let me see here. What is it? What is this? <laughs> uh, full screen, dynamic view. I, Wait a I, minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> That's the dynamic, that uh, normal view. Okay, normal view. All right. Let me see here. If I went, no, I don't want to do that. Dynamic if view. You, you wanted normal. Yeah. None of us would be here. Jeez, I, why all of a sudden do I have this I little, little gazorchness here? I don't I, understand. I see, I see on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Where you're on top of each other. 
Oh, there we go. I know what it is. Yeah, because I, I, I had to readjust the screen today uh, in order to get uh, uh, in order to get Bob in. And then when you guys come on, I have to redo it. So, you know, Did you do the update today. Huh? The uh, Skype update. I didn't. I didn't. This. I didn't have a Skype update. Oh, it's, it must be a Mac thing. Huh? It must be a Mac thing. I think it probably is a Mac thing. To, to tell you the truth, um, but uh, hold on a second. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to do a little bit here. Let me see here. Uh, let me. Let me just bring this out just a little bit. I. I have to. Uh, I'm trying to reapportion people on the screen. Okay, so that they're just a little. Bit better. Well, maybe not that much better. Only three yeah. of us. What are you worried about? Huh? There are only, only, th only, <laughs> only only three of us. Yeah. Well, let me just transition here. There we go. There we go. It, this looks a little bit better. I gotta gotta do gotta do it. Gotta make it look good. You know. All right. Hey, first of all, I want to thank uh, Damien, uh, who I don't know why you did it. You know. Uh, but somewhere I must have done something right somewhere to have somebody be this good to me. But for years I've had this storage locker that's been sucking money into this black hole. And uh, uh, Damien has a storage place. He runs up in uh, Santa Rosa and he said, on uh, Monday the 26th, I'm moving you out of there. And he, he got all my stuff and he moved it out of there. I think all that's left are a couple of desks, right? Yep, a couple of desks, um, your um, your parents' desk, yeah, and two two end tables. Two, is that it? And two two uh, like fourteen inch televisions. Oh, okay, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. And, and we uh, uh, so we're out of there now. You know, you I, I'm, a, I'm I'm officially out of there on Friday because I made my leaving date on on Friday. So, you know. well, I, I told them we were out. Two days ago, so if they didn't do it, or yesterday, and if they didn't do it yesterday, well, that's their problem. Now, they said there'll have to be a, a dumping charge, and I thought about that for a second. And suppose they try to sell these desks, because well, what do you do at your place? Don't you, when people leave stuff behind, don't, if it's good, don't you try to sell it off or auction it off? or? We don't, well, yes. Yeah, see, the problem is that we, and now public storage might be different than us, but we don't actually have the ability to charge a customer after the fact. You know, if they abandon crap at our facility, there's kind of nothing we can do about it. Um, so we we have two choices. I can pay person. I can pay out of the store's budget to go to make a dump run, um, or I can, if it's of any value, I will just hold it until the next auction and just auction it off. And even if it sells for five dollars, at least somebody else is taking the stuff away f for me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that would, but suppose they they charge me a dumping fee and then they sell the stuff anyway. Isn't that wouldn't that be kind of, I don't know if we call it fraudulent, but you know, yeah. How are you going to know? How am I going to know exactly? Yeah. Well, yeah, how I, you know? I haven't heard a word from them about paying for a dumping fee. So you know, what yeah. is contract? Uh, if you still have it, I don't know where the contract is. It was fourteen years ago, Phil. I know where it is. It's it's in the old uh, the old storage. Room. It's in the desk I left in the storage room. Yeah. No, I did actually pull everything out of the desk that was in there. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was in there? There wasn't a whole lot. Nothing really. But um, there's like a this. Oh, that is where? What is that to? Well, it's got an R on it. Perhaps it's for Ruth. Could stand for Ronnie. That might have been my ex-wife's. No R. What? No, that wasn't my, maybe that was my mother's. It, it, it could be. Maybe when she died, I took that, you know, I, I, I took that desk from her place when she died. Right. How's that, me robbing a dead woman? Isn't that horrible? Uh, <laughs> I just got to say one thing. You know who your friends are on moving day, you know? Y yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty true. Pretty yeah. true. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Uh, yeah, no. Now, yeah, see, the fun the, here's why. If you really want the answer as to why I did it, this yeah. is why I get to hold shit. Now, like show this. that. Yeah. Show that. That's that's my, a very proud thing that I own. Do you know what that is? That's a very valuable baseball card. Roy Hobbs. Wow. It, it's a Roy Hobbs. 
Yes, from the natural. Yeah. And somebody gave that to me. They said they somehow, I think they got the whole, you know, in the movie, you see these things being printed and they come off on mm -hmm. whole pages with like 16 or 20 of them on there. Uh, and somehow this guy got laid his hands on one of the sheets and cut them up into Roy Hobbs uh, cards and gave me one. Yeah. Thanks. People were very good to me that way. And of course, yeah. as you notice, I never threw anything out. <laughs> Did you, did you find yes you have about 200 boxes that are labeled tchotchkes the, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you know an extra 20 boxes that's labeled stuff <laughs> uh, well i mean it was the best way i could describe it somewhere in there and i don't know if you saw them are is the first 20 issues of the national lampoon in they're in like in yellow binders what you have a bunch of boxes that are labeled magazines and stuff like that yeah. that I, you know, I didn't go through. There. Also, I just opened it up and it's clearly magazines, so I closed it back up. You know, I, I also uh, have a three D, uh, um, uh, a three D um, comic book collection. That I did find. Did you find it? <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> that was pretty darn cool. We were thumbing through that. That was that was pretty awesome. You have a you have a. Um, you have a, a G.I. Joe in 3D. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what happened? I'll tell you. What happened was, years ago, I bought all those early comic books, like the Mighty Mouse and the Three Stooges and so on in 3D. And then, of course, like the, you know, I, I wasn't a comic book collector, so eventually I threw them out or something. Years later, when I decided I wanted to collect 3D comic books, I had to start buying these things, and they were like 25 bucks each, you know. Mm -hmm. But some... I went through the same thing with Transformers. <laughs> oh, I got rid of all my Transformers when I was a kid, and then when I was an adult, and I decided, oh, I want to start collecting Transformers again. I was like, holy crap, $300 for this thing. <laughs> Do you remember that show, Amazing Stories, that Steven Spielberg did? Oh, yeah. Well, there was oh, one yeah. episode about a guy who was a kid, and he just kept everything. And he kept he was a hoarder and he kept all these toys and everything and then he became an older person and, and he was like a bum because all he did was hoard this stuff and finally one day somebody comes along and starts looking at the stuff he hoarded that's annoying when you do that phil uh no more annoying when you did it well i did it quickly <laughs> well i'm doing it as quickly as and I, I wasn't panning i was zooming in anyway where was i uh and, and and so then uh, somebody sees all this. Mark Hamill played the kid. And uh, uh, somebody comes along and says, you've got a fortune here. And he has like, you know, uh, Detective Comics number one and things like that. You know, because he, he, he never threw anything away. And the, the, I guess the, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, fable of, you know, the, the moral of the story was don't throw anything away and someday you'll be rich from it. And I think that's true. Except it's not. Here's why. why. Somebody who collects somebody who collects all this stuff for their entire life is never ever going to sell any of it. They're going to die and all of this stuff is gonna be in their collection. You know, you have a bunch of valuable stuff in your collection. Are, are we ever gonna sell it? What, 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 what's, what's valuable in my collection? Tell me. Because you know my collection, you know the Bennett collection better than anyone else. Oh, I haven't, I haven't pawed through everything. <laughs> you haven't pawed through everything. But did you? It, no, but you've got some, you've got some probably some valuable records, mm -hmm. uh, some valuable LPs. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there were LPs. I I sold all my LPs when I came to New York, but I held on to a couple of. I held on to a. a all the comedy LPs that I owned. Those were the ones I held on to. And those are probably worth something now. Yeah, uh, you've got a lot of those. You've got probably two boxes that are labeled comedy albums, but then you have a third box that's just LPs. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, you've got a lot, of, a lot of memorabilia stuff, things that were given to you as swag while you were on this on the radio and um you know you've got a football that's signed by i don't know but you know um it's probably worth something a baseball signed by somebody i i don't know i can't recognize the signature so i don't know who it is but it's probably worth something mostly it's you know it'll be worth something to alex bennett fans did you did, did, <laughs> His, did, did, did you find the hockey stick that was signed by uh, all the sharks the san jose that, sharks 
I was actually going to mention that is the one thing that I have not found. Really? Oh, and I'm hold not on a sure. second. I got, I got to call somebody back here for a quick second. Oh, no. No, he's here. Huh, what happened to him? There he is. Are you there, uh, Mike? Mike, can you hear us? See, Mike can't hear us. So let me get rid of Mike, and then let me try and call him right back. Here we go. There we go. Uh, we'll give him a call. Uh, he apparently had some kind of trouble getting on. Anyway, what were you saying? You couldn't find the hockey stick. Yeah, I did not find I, I may have stick. thrown it away. I don't know. I may have given it to somebody who liked hockey. Are you, are, oh, there you are. Here, Here's Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you? Good. I'm here. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we're, we're talking about my stuff. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, yeah, we're talking about my to, stuff. Be, well, no, here's the thing. Uh, wait, wait, oh, Chris, uh, uh, Alex, uh, yeah, will you marry me, Christy Canyon? Yeah, Ooh, she was. Uh, she, yeah, you, who doesn't remember yeah. her? You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, uh, so, Sad thing is that. Most, that uh, what, 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 most, were you, what were you saying, uh, Phil? Uh, the sad thing is, is that most of all this stuff winds up in a dumpster when we die. You know, uh, we we like it, you know, we covet it, and uh, keep it for years. But our our kids and whoever uh, inherits our stuff, it's all going to go in a dumpster. Uh, you know, as a collector, my friend Shecky is the ultimate collector. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has thousands, maybe ten thousand DVDs. Okay, yeah. he has uh, he has like. Artwork, comic book artwork. I mean, I, it, all over the place. I mean, he has he has films. He has everything. And um, I said to him, so, you know, what if you die? What's going to happen with this? He says, it'll wind up in a dumpster outside this place. That's right. And I said, so what is this, what is this thing you and I have, more him than me, to collect this stuff, this mania, knowing that someday we're going to drop dead and what's it going to be worth to us, you know? It's going to be worth something to Damien because he's 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 got authority over the locker and he'll probably get all this stuff. You okay, know. it's like with me. I'm an amateur radio operator. Yeah. I bought an old tube set, radio tube sets, but two of them. Yeah. Two big amplifiers. You know what's going to happen to them? Dumpster. Dumpster. You know. Well, I already donated uh, both radios to a radio club, so. I don't know. Did you find a radio there? A cathedral radio? Talking to me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny story. <laughs> what? We were, we were moving stuff down the elevator, you know, and, yeah. you know, we got a stack of boxes on the hand truck. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're just peering the top of the box, and there's this really old radio, this, you know, this this cathedral-style radio yeah. in this box. Yeah. And we're like, wow, that's an old radio. Wow, that's kind of cool. We put the lid back on the box. We look on the side of the box. The box says, new radio. <laughs> and we were like, What? new radio and we we're, were just joking what kind of radio is this that this is the new radio and sure enough we found a box labeled the old radio and it has it's an even older radio with like these big five inch vacuum tubes that's inside. that's the one is it okay is it in, is it it, it, it looks okay to me yeah that that and one actually that it. one actually works for sure oh. how you, uh, wait a minute how do you know the tubes are not flat well, I mean, we might have to go out and find the tubes somewhere. I think they still do have places you can go to get tubes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, and you can get when I first yeah. got that, my ex-girlfriend Kathleen gave me that as a birthday present. It was a, it's a, it was like, what? I'm trying to remember the brand, but it was from the either the 40s or maybe late 30s, and it was a cathedral radio. Possibly, or uh, huh? I'm just guessing. No, I, I'm trying to remember which brand it is now. But anyway, oh, she got it for me, and, and, and she says, it works and everything. And I, so I, I, I click the thing on, and nothing happens. And I said, nothing's happening. Plug it. What I, no, it was plugged in and everything. I'm looking, it's plugged in. The lights are going on. Up. Yes, that was it. And I had forgotten as a kid, you had to, when you turned on a radio, it took about 45 <laughs> seconds for it to warm up and then start playing a signal. And mm -hmm. I was so used to just, boom, there you go. There's your radio now, because I was now in the age of transistors that I had forgotten that. But that radio, oddly enough, has a pretty damn good sound on it. For You know, it's only AM. Tubes. 
usually do. Yeah. It's yeah. such a full, rich sound. You know, if if I could get a like a Macintosh or a really good amplifier that had the outputs that could handle the digital stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would. But uh, you know what they it, but this 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 word you just said is handling the digital stuff. And the yeah, fact is like a CD player. Well, and, the fact is that digital is not as good as analog. I don't own any records anymore. You you talk about the value of a record collection. I took my entire record collection mm -hmm. and I took it to uh, Rasputin and they gave me 15 cents a record. Uh, you know, I mean. I well, know. I had a guy come over to my place and he, he there were certain things he gave me more money for than others. Uh, one yeah. of my discs, he gave me 300 bucks. Yeah. And if I told you who it was, you'd probably go who? And it was it was the 13th floor elevators. Oh yeah. Uh, it was the first album they uh, the first album they ever did. I helped produce it down in Houston, Texas, on a local label, and it had "You're Gonna Miss Me" on it. It was the whole album that was released nationally later on. And he said, "This is worth a fortune." He says, "This is three hundred dollars." Wow. And I said, "But you know, I've got the I've got all the Who albums. I've got all the Beatle albums." He says, "It's not worth shit." And I said, why? And they said, because they sold so well, there were so many of them. Yeah. Now, I do have some, and I still have them here. Uh, or I think I have them here, or maybe they are in the storage locker. But I have uh, two, two test pressings of, the Who, of, of Tommy by The Who. They're wow. two discs, wow. a, two, this, a test pressing. It, it, all it says on it is it, it, it's kind of by blank white labels, and then it has a mimeograph page that came along with it that said Tommy, and it said originally an opera, and then somebody had done the carrot sign and put in rock because they decided not to call it an opera but to call it a rock opera. And I, and I asked this guy, well, this has got to be worth something, and he said, I'd give you money for it, but I don't know what to give you for it. He said, he, yeah. he said, I have no idea how much this would be worth. <laughs> that happens. You know, if you watch that uh, TV program uh, with the pawn shop in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, and people come in sometimes with things and the guy says, you know, I, I can't buy this. I don't know what it's worth. I don't, and, I don't know how much it's worth. Yeah. And that's right. exactly what he said to me. I don't know how much it's worth. But so I got something like, I don't know, $5,000 for all my records and stuff. You know, they didn't come in. I got a little more than 15 cents on a lot of things. I mean, he had a pile there where he said, these are all, all worth at least, you know, 20 bucks a piece. Well, the, the reason I got so little is that my copy of Radio Dinner that you signed for me. Yes. Uh, fetch very much either <laughs> that was i think 15 cents also well, actually that one the copy that you have of radio dinner is yeah, well, rare because uh, you don't it, it, it folded out it was a dub it was a yeah. it wasn't a double lp but it had an lp on one side and then it folded out and opened up mm -hmm. uh and uh those copies are not around much today the, if if there are any kind of copies or cds they always just have the back cover and the front cover you know, I see. So, yeah, mine folded out and you signed it. Yeah, and I have my picture. If you open it up, I actually have a photograph in there of me and my girlfriend. Right. Yeah. And I met, you know, once uh, at your apartment. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, that was one of the more miserable relationships of my life. She was beyond hot, though. <laughs> she, she was beyond hot. It was one of those kind of things. We were doing a. Uh, we did, we did a thing, I was working for WPLJ, and we were doing live concerts. Mm -hmm. And when, before I got there, the, you know the Elton John live concert with has, the, has the date on it? That was done as a WPLJ concert. In the park On, or on something? the air. No, no, it was oh. in a studio. We went to a studio, and we did a live concert. So the, the, one night, I, when I was working for them, they did the, the Allman Brothers. So I went over to see it. And there was this woman across the room, and that was Naomi. And I saw her, and I said, "Now that's a hot woman." But you know, uh, too hot for me. I mean, I you know, I'm who am I? I'm this schlub, right? Uh, the next day, I'm sitting at home. The phone rings. I pick up the phone. It's a woman. She says, "Hi, my name is Naomi. I saw you last night at the Allman Brothers concert." And I said, "Oh, 
I said, uh, and uh, what were, uh, I don't know who you are exactly. What were you wearing? And she described what she was wearing, and it was that woman. <laughs> oh, neat. So, so now he, here comes the best part of the story, okay? <clears throat> so she says, you want to get together? And I said, yeah, for sure. And she said, okay, uh, how about tonight? I said, that'd be great. She says, okay, 7 o'clock, I'll be over, okay. So she comes in, the door, I open the door, there she is, and there's a guy with her. I'm going, what is it? She a hooker and that's her pimp? You know, and yeah. she said, oh, this is my friend Bob, he just helped carry my suitcase. And I said to myself, what is she doing, moving in? And yeah, she said, and then that. she said, I'm moving to Boston tomorrow, and uh, I'm leaving on a, on a bus in the morning. So uh, I thought I'd just bring the thing with me in case maybe we were spending the night together. And we did. She ate us breakfast. Huh? Well, that she was later on. Breakfast. This was later on. This was later on. And she, uh, <laughs> we had, that night we had, you know, hot monkey sex. Okay. It was really a great, one of the more memorable nights in the sack for me. Well, it would be memorable, except I want to forget it, but you'll find out why in a moment. So then uh, it's morning, and she says, got to go, got to make the bus. I'm moving to Boston. Nice knowing you. And she leaves. Now, if the story had ended there, I could be sitting here telling you a story about a great night of sex I had with a woman who then just disappeared, right? But no, one thing led to another, and she called me, and I went to Boston, and then she moved back to New York, and then she moved in with me, and it was the most miserable, horrible relationship I've ever had in my fucking life. And if, I, if it had just remained at that one night, it would have been would wonderful. Have been right. It would have been a great story. But instead, all I have is memories of just this pain and torture I had to put up with. You know, and it was really something. You got to quit after while you're still in the honeymoon period. Yeah. 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 And the ones who are hot like that, you know, uh, it, amazing how she got less and less hot the more I hung out with her. You know, how yeah. all, all of a sudden her 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 sexy face started turning into butterscotch pudding, <laughs> you know. No matter. Yeah. You know, they used to say that, you know, like uh, Raquel Welch uh, would look uh, like an old lady after six months. You know, it was. Uh, uh, that, that's what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. After the honeymoon is over. But that was my that was so that's that's what's in the National Lampoon album, uh, everybody. Disconnected, reconnecting from OBS Studio. How come they say that, and then the thing's still working okay? I don't know. I don't understand it. Now, Reconnection now, successful. I have full picture in Skype, but when I look at it in the uh, Facebook, uh, my the top of my head's cut off. Uh, the top of your head's cut off because that's the way I've got it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, you, you you want you want more of your head in there? You really? Well, that's why I was fooling around with the Skype picture. Oh well, you don't have to do that. Oh. Uh, here's oh. Tony. Now we can see your full head because there's now more people there, and it's pushing you down, pushing your picture down. See? Yeah. Are you happy yeah, that's now? What do. That's what they do to the Jews all the time. They push us down. Yeah. Push us. Down. Yeah. Oi. I don't know the the, the <laughs> thing that uh, <laughs> the thing that does the video supposedly it said it said it stopped and uh, it reconnected and yet the picture's still going perfectly on the on the internet so I don't know what that's all about. You know it's funny you guys during field day where all of us amateur radio operators go out play radio yeah I run the old amplifier. Just to see if the damn thing would work. Yeah. Oh, my God. It sounded better than my friend of mine saw in state one. He paid over five grand. Yeah. I only paid about 450 bucks for it used mm -hmm. at an estate sale. My friend of mine goes, I'll give you 400 bucks for it. He says, I'm about 450 and got a deal. He says, okay. So he's going to pick it up. The thing weighs about 1,000 pounds. It's wow. Boat anchor. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. All my friends that were uh, ham radio operators had like eighty foot towers uh, with big quads on it and so forth. How, uh, what do you? Uh, I knew one guy in Brooklyn. All he had was a dipole in his bedroom, 
He used to say to his yeah. father, I can't how, how often did this guy get laid? <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. But uh, he would say to his father, I can't get out. I can't get out. His father said, open the door. You'll get out. What's Damien doing? <laughs> Damien's looking down at stuff. And what, what, what are you looking at? Uh, pictures. Pictures? What pictures? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Your pictures. Oh, really? Oh, show, <laughs> show us some. Show. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Here's 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 Alex oh. and family. Oh, there's my oh wow. There's my father, and there's my mother, and there's a young Bennett Schwarzman. Let me uh, let me make the picture larger for the audience. Okay, who's watching this? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that's oh, dad. Wow. All right. What what a handsome family that is. Uh, let me see here. Here we uh, got, uh, ho hold it up high because I I have a uh, back, uh, it, back it up back it up just a little bit. That is uh, that is in Houston, Texas, at uh, K at K I L T. Yeah. Is that Jack on the right? <laughs> what? <that> tan? No. <laughs> hey, you got a series of cats. Cats. Okay, that's uh, oh, that's that. Oh, that's Charlie. I think that's Charlie. Charlie was a great cat. He was a Look wonderful cat, huh? Look at that sofa. The, yeah, the style. yeah. Oh, them, the, I, well, no, me, no, me, no. You know who that was? That wasn't. That was uh, that was um, Mouse. That Is was it? Mouse. Oh, okay. it was Mouse. You remember Mouse? Mouse was blind and can pee in the it, toilet. Yeah, and peed on the toilet. Yeah, that's Mouse. You gotta be kidding! I, I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, that's before. oh, that yeah. that I believe is Shabbos. That was my favorite oh. animal in the whole world. He was my guru. Uh, he was so zen, it was amazing. Uh, I could take him across 14th Street in high traffic in my arms, and he wouldn't even panic. He would nothing. Just hey, life's cool. There, there's oh there, and that's that's Shabbos. Oh God, he was fat at that point. There's <laughs> another one over on the other side. Is that the cat? I think really? that is uh, that is that is Yantiv, and in the middle, I think is Mouse. Did yeah. you have more than one cat at one time or no? Uh, I one time I had five cats. Oh wow, that's pretty yeah, cool. It was, it, it was disgusting. So you have these cool you have these cool lenticular photographs. Oh, oh yes, the the three D. Those were taken uh, uh those were taken when I got world? to San Francisco, yeah. And that's my producer Irene with the cat. Yeah. yeah. It looks like yeah. your Sammy's cat was like Kind Why are you taking a picture of me? Oh, there's Bob Rubin. We had him on tonight. Oh no, that no, that's Gary Haber. That's my business manager. That's um, who that is. That, from is a, that from, Gary? Yeah, from a, from afar, it kind of looked like it could have been Rubin because of the like beard. Robin. <laughs> Rubin. No, that's that's Gary Haber, and that's me when I was a younger man. Uh, well, you had he, long hair, didn't oh, you? Oh, I had long hair. Yeah, yeah. That's when I was doing Midnight okay. Blue. Anyone who might be offended should probably look away now. Oh, is this going to be? Oh, you know what that is? I'll tell you what that <laughs> is. All right. Uh, uh, that was uh, what was her name now? But she came by my show. She came by my show. She came by my show. And she said, "No." She said to me, "Okay." Uh, I said so. She was a stripper, and she was at a strip club. And I said, "So what do you do?" And she said. Because I said in the ad, it says, must be seen to be believed. And I said, so what is it you do? She says, well, let me show you. And she hopped up on the table and stuck her fist up her ass. <laughs> she must make a lot of money. And I remember Sue Murphy was there. She went, oh, my God. Dana Gould was there. And he went, what was he saying? Really? <laughs> you know, I mean, the comment. I still have the tape here somewhere of when she stuck her fist up her ass. But and so I'm, so, I'm, I'm surprised to let you air it. They do that at work. And so I, I took a shot of it. You know, it's on radio. I, I, I wanted a, it was a souvenir. Wow. Who, who's that? That is uh, that is, okay. That is my namesake. Now you know I have a nickname, and my nickname was Bolo. Oh, yeah, Bolo. Bolo, and mm -hmm. that is Boloslav. That is my uncle who died, I think, at the age of 21, 22. Oh, my. Uh, he was wearing a tie, not a bowl. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you, you may notice the family resemblance. You know, uh, they were my father and his brother were much better looking than I ever turned out. Yeah, your father's sharp looking guy. Yeah, he was a good looking man. Yeah, 
Oh, okay. Let me identify the people. Okay, first of all, where your thumb is over here is, like is uh, uh, to the left. From left to right is Richard Sands, who is the program director of the radio station. Uh, to uh, there's me. Then oh, that's Morton Downey Jr. Oh, I was in the middle. Culture. In the middle, that's my, my, Morton Downey Jr. Move it back a little bit because it's getting a little fuzzy. There, that's about right. That's so everybody can see. And then uh, to the right, who was that? I don't know who the one on the very right is. Uh, oh, Ed Cramp, of course, is right next to Morton Downey Jr. And I believe that was shot in New York uh, when we went to New York to do the show. There's me with Morton Downey Jr. And uh, there's David Feldman next to oh, him. Feldman. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, so, oh, we, yeah, we got lots of photos here. Let's can, see who's that. Oh, that's 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 my ex-wife, Susan. Yeah. Uh, really, she's hot. I mean, there she weighs about three hundred pounds now. But, oh. but no, I put that she, picture she, up with Susan she, again. She, she, she was hot. She was funny. She she was a great person. She, she I like. She spoke, spoke perfect Yiddish. Yeah. Uh, she was in the Yiddish theater as a child. And uh, I got to say, looking at that picture now, man, I, that, that, she, I married a one heck of a beautiful woman there, you know. Uh, but uh, they all get ugly once they get to marry me. So, you know. Honestly, there's, there's a lot of resemblance to Marjorie. At Marjorie? Yeah. No, I don't so. think so. I don't think no. so. Different types. I mean, I felt, well, I always felt Susan well, looked. Well, you knew them, so you, you it, know where Susan the, what was type kind of Elizabeth Taylor esque, you know. She kind of had that that vibe. What what else do we have here? It's like, this is your life, Alex. This is a lot of cats. No, this is you know I forgot about you know I I of nice course I know these pictures. Obviously, I'm identifying them, but I forgot I that I had even put them into storage. You know, well, you got a photo book of photos. Oh, those are photos I took uh, when I was doing a lot of photography. One of those is uh, Harold Black, and uh, uh, that's, issue, that's, right? a, that's a woman, back off a little bit, a woman from Max's Kansas City. But, you know, I took the picture, and I liked the picture. I liked the way it was posed. What else do we Do we have any other good pictures? That's just a nice, I love that picture with the fence and uh, what, whatever. Nice. These are some good pictures. Yeah. Um, uh. Phil's getting jealous of Here we go. Oh, well, that's a uh, hey, that's my vertigo shot. <laughs> you know, down a flight of stairs with somebody walking down, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was very big into photography at one point. And, slow shutter speed. Huh? I had a slow shutter speed. In that case, uh, yeah, uh, which is often very effective. Oh, that's a naked woman. That's a, that. She was actually a, uh, what was she? I think she was a. Was she a porn actress or was she? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I like, but I like that picture. I think it's a very de nice small art. Was her waist, huh? How small was her waist? I don't know. There's the uh, the Eiffel Tower. I took that. I, you know, anybody can take that for a you can buy a yeah. postcard that looks like that. But those everyone's got their token Eiffel Tower. I wasn't a bad photographer. I, I I had a pretty good eye, and then I also I worked in the the dark room to you know do them just right, so I got them the way I liked them. The old I, uh, old school, old school. Is there anything else you want to show us right now, uh, Damien? Hmm. What's this? What's that? Oh, you got a diploma. Wait a minute. No. V Victoria nice. Zuber. It's in German. I have no I, I have no idea what that Berlin. is. I have is no idea what that is. Uh, this, is this line says Hern Wolf Schwarzman in in Fried, Frieden now. Hold it up a second. Let me look at the writing on there. I'm wondering if that isn't something no, that has Amy to do Hirsch. with it says that, like Herman. Uh, well, wait Hirsch. a minute. What what? Wolf, Herman Hirsch. Her, something Wolf Schwarzman. I'm just wondering if that has something to do with uh, them coming into this country. If that's some oh, kind of exit be. visa uh, or something like that. Paper? No, that's that no. It's they're German though, so I, they look like they might be uh, something that has to do with. Uh, uh, what, what's what am I thinking of? Uh, oh, man. I, yeah, it could could be a, could have been exit papers. Could have been a birth certificate. Yeah, it's in very good condition. 
Yes. Would you do us me a favor and probably can't be that old. When you get a chance, would you send that to me? Because I'd like I'm sending you all of this. Please. Are you, oh, you're sending all of it. I see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You know, it's this kind small of storage room. Huh? This kind of stuff is. is oh, that's totally... that's the girl who was in the mirror naked. Okay. Huh. So, and that was a woman I knew. Uh, she wasn't a porno actress or anything else. She was a very good friend, but I I just like that picture for some reason. Um, you know, so you know, it's, it's, it, anything else of any great note, or uh, oh. or shall we end this tedious segment of my life? <laughs> we'll we'll have more coming in the future. You'll have more coming in the future. Yeah. So I'll, I'll show you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll we'll end on the O.J. Simpson. Oh, you got to show you. What do I? Have, what is that? No, it's, this is the Hall of Fame. Member yeah, of pro football. Of this is prior to the yeah. highway run. No, wait a minute. I wonder. I, I wonder if that was a remake after the trial, while the trial was happening, or whether that is actually that may be authentic. Yeah, it was like an NBC yeah, card. Yeah, I think they were. Uh, they gave those away in promotion type things. Well, I that see. would explain why Alex got it because Alex has a lot of stuff that was only because available. Because it says NBC on it as well. Yeah. That's when he was working NBC, for. Yeah, so. it's like See, a that's, capsule. That's you know? kind of what I mean when I say you've got stuff that's worth that's worth stuff because you have a lot of things that are one of a kind that were only given away as promotional items yeah. to people in the industry, yeah. and that were just simply not available to the general public. Um, and and you've got a few things that you got via industry friends that are stamped not marked for resale you know and those sort of things are are worth money to those people who collect those sort of things yeah yeah you, you're talking about weirdos sounds like you're well, starting of course. To get <laughs> you know, it, it, that's like, just like a time capsule like it's opening yeah. up a time capsule and I, I think that's pretty neat okay well well yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put is all the other your, oh, is okay, this your mom that's my mother that's my mother oh. wearing a t-shirt about me uh, uh, it, 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 that was her in front of a control board. She did a radio show. She did uh, Ruth, Schwarz, Ruth Schwarzman's top, okay. Ruth Bennett's uh, top 10 countdown. Well, didn't you pull and, her onto some of your shows too? Well, she would, come, yeah, she would come on my show and so on. Yeah, but, yeah. But it was always she, Alex's mom. Yeah, but she, uh, she got her own show. And then when I quit KMEL, they kept her show on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then my lawyer said to me, so are you talking to your mother? And I said, she's my fucking mother. And they said, well, don't. I said, why? She said, well, he, she's still employed by them. Yeah. And, and so don't that. talk yeah. to her. And I went, what? <laughs> you know, don't talk to my mother. <laughs> yeah. So is that about it for, for now, Damien? Yeah, well We'll end that segment for tonight. We'll end that segment for tonight. We'll, we'll have more show until there's later. There's more where that came from, right? Yeah. yeah it's oh, all boy. here now. So, you know, I mean, I could I could be back in 10 minutes with more. You, 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 know, you know, really, I think I'll make you the official uh, archivist of the Alex Bennett uh, archives. There you go. Uh, because uh, you seem to know more about my life than I do at this point. <laughs> Well, only because I'm going through all of this stuff, and a lot of this stuff I do recall. You know, well, you've you've had many stories in the past. You know, I've known all about that that baseball card for, well, since you got it. Actually, yeah. I remember when you got it. Um, and, and somebody gave and, it to me while I was on the air, right? I'm not sure if it was on the air, but I remember it was. I, you you were you were really excited about it, and you talked about it for a long time after you got it. For instance, I have a thing up here. I I, I could move the camera and show it to you, but I don't want to do that right now. But I have, uh, for instance, people gave me stuff, and this one guy gave me uh, uh, a animation cell of the Frito Bandito. It was done by Tux, Tex Avery. Uh, and I said, how'd, how'd you get that? He said, my father worked for the company that was doing the, uh, the stuff and, uh, the cartoons. And, uh, so I have a cell of the Frito Bandito. Uh, I also have Red and Stimpy up here, a, a, a hand written, hand drawn picture of Red and Stimpy. Stimp. They were the greatest. <laughs> you know, you have Ren a and lot Stimpy. of Red and Stimpy, um, promotional merchandise. In fact, it's right next to the Midnight Blue thing. I think people might be actually be able to see it up there. I can't. 
let me see here. What 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 do they see in 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 my photograph? Nah, it's not there because I've I've changed my perspective. But anyway, uh, so uh, and John's on the phone. Uh, we noticed that. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, let me let me go around here. What if, if I were to ask Tony? Tony is a comic book collector, right? Oh. And you grade yeah. comic books and th yeah. things like that. What's the most valuable comic book you own? I don't. Know. I have a lot. It'd be hard to say. I would say price wise, I I have books worth at least five thousand. Really? Wow. Yeah, I can show you some. I have. Yeah, I easily. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I have anything here. I have. I had. They do my basement. Get one. So. Just get one, because. Okay. I, again, I have a whole bunch. Yeah. Of... Now that every night is video night. <laughs> yeah, and some people forget they're on video, so they call their friends and they, uh, <laughs> or they fall asleep. That's another thing they do. I think he's calling his bookie. I think so. Nice. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You hold up pictures, and I and I have to remember where those pictures were taken and when they were taken. You know, and um, what it is as we go through life, we don't think much about the stuff that we have. You know, uh, you, I've and so I never became much of an archivist. I mean, like for instance, if you go on to um, Roku. And you go listen to all the old like interviews that I did. Uh, there's only one at the very top for when I was in New York, or when I was in Houston, Texas, and that was an interview with Timothy Leary. Then you get down to New York, and there are some more interviews. And then when you get down to San Francisco, there are even more. And when I get down to Sirius XM, there are tons and tons of interviews. The reason being that the medium that we had to keep the stuff on was not in the old days, you didn't want to drag it around with you. I have, the interview with John Lennon and Yoko Ono that I have is still on a 10 and a half inch reel, okay? Now wow. if, I, if I kept a copy of every show I did during that time that on 10 and a half inch reels, believe me, Damien would have said, fuck you, I'm not moving that stuff out of storage. I would listen to everything over and over again. You well, I can show you something. Huh? You've got a lot of old stuff, though. You've got a lot of old stuff still. Well, you know, you know why it's old? Cause I am. <laughs> well, yeah. You see, but I you mean, got, you've got a lot of recordings from the, you know, that that you haven't you haven't seen yet. Really? Yeah, and I had thought I had thought that I we had gone through most of the audio tapes, and then I found another couple boxes of audio tapes. So you've got what, what, what kind coming. of audio tapes? You mean DAT tapes and stuff? No, re regular audio tapes. Re reel to reel? No, regular cassettes. Oh, cassettes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. you didn't send me all the cassettes. I sent you most of them. I thought I had sent you most of them. Oh, really? Yeah, and but I've discovered another couple Be boxes of because them. because they only go, they start. They start, most of them are when I came back to San Francisco. P previous to that, there's stuff there, but previous to that, uh, you know, I mean, do, uh, do, uh, there should be some stuff there from 95, 94. I the uh, excuse I, me, I, 85, 84. Yeah. yeah, I just glanced in the box, saw it was cassette tapes, and said, oh, okay, there it is. You know, but the vast majority of what you've got left is um, video. Really? Oh yeah, boy. you have boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of video. <laughs> I may tell you to just keep that in storage for the time being, because a lot of that is is you know, well I don't know I'll I'll figure You'll have that to out. Find yourself a well, find yourself a. Let's just get the that, let's get the audio cool. here first. Let me see here. Here's Tony Magno. Tony, just uh, yeah, hold it hold it back. Uh, no no no, don't pull it back. Hold it so that it's not. So it's reflecting yeah, the that's... light from the TV set. So angle it, angle it. Oh. There it, we yeah. go. Okay. Uh, what, now, how old is that one? Tell 1971, me. the first Raza Ghoul Batman 232. This is worth about 1200. Says 15 cents. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's 1971. They introduced the Raza Ghoul, the, de the devil guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The demon. Yeah. Who is now? So I bought this. I bought this a while ago in the eighties. I would always buy. I always religiously bought comic books with my work money, 
So I always yeah. would try to get like key issues. Well, so so since like you know a lot about like comic ben, books, you know, so, since you know a lot yeah, about, I have com- a big run of Batman. Yeah. Since you know a lot about comic books, uh, that says Batman with Robin, and the name Robin yeah. is very prominent. Uh, that, that was when did when did when, when did they when did they start doing that? You know, they did that for a brief period in the seventies. Then they took it away. I don't know why they did that. Good thing you picked that up because they never had that there. Yeah, most people would have picked that up, Alex. So yeah. how much they did that for a while? How much? Maybe, did it wait, 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 wait a minute. Tony. Damien has a question. Yes, Damien. Tony, how much did it cost you to get it graded? Uh, well, I'm a dealer, so this is anything below seventy five. This cost me probably with my discount because I saved twenty percent. I'd say twenty-seven dollars. Oh, that's not bad at all. No, it's that's not. not bad at all. I not, and a book like this, you're not going to sell any type of cheap book. You got to have it graded. Yeah. Now we've been. They do the restoration check. And like John Rockwell is John Rockwell is joining us. Wait a minute. What, what's that noise? John, are you there? John, John, call us back. Call us back. You've got some kind of real horrible sound and noise happening. In fact, let me hang up on you, and let me. His, uh, his, his Skype may uh, have an auto thing checked, you know, for auto No, that's sound. not it. That's not the problem. That's not the problem he's having. Let's uh, see here. What, uh, Wait a minute. Here we go. You, you still got a problem there, John. Wow. You know what to do, John? Quit your, quit your, hang up, quit Skype. Right, and then relaunch it. That may be the problem you're having. Okay, boy, that is some some weird ass noise. When you were in San Francisco, Alex, what was the best interview you ever done? And when you were in San Francisco, couldn't I couldn't even begin to tell you. I mean, if you want to ask me what what's the best interview I ever did in my life, I could tell you. You know, uh, pretty much with a with a certain amount of certainty. And so it would probably have to be San Francisco because that's where it happened, and that was the interview I did by phone with Louis Farrakhan. Um, I was very proud of that interview. Uh, I, I know of one that uh, will go down in the record books. All right. Um, when, in Sausalito, when they wouldn't let anybody out because of the uh, mudslides, yeah. uh, I was your only guest uh, on the phone Tied to the uh, well, we uh, I did it for I did it for my dining room table, uh, right? Exactly. Because I, we could, we could, there and because we couldn't get out. Let me right. see here. I, let, they have, they let, made, let's see. Are you there, John? Boy, what I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with your situation, John. John, listen to me, John. I would reboot your entire machine. I, I would is your re- microphone yeah, plugged in? Uh, is your microphone plugged in? Uh, check your microphone wires. You check your microphone wires, but we're not Dang hearing you. We're not hearing you. <laughs> we're not hearing you. No. <laughs> we're not hearing you at all. Boy, that's terrible. That's- Have you ever done an interview with the group, uh, you know, of the old bands, you know, like Jan Joplin and, you know, some of them? Like not the hate not really. I was I was in I, I was in San Francisco in New York by the time a lot of that was happening. Although no, wait a minute. No, that was happening. I was in Houston. I was in Chicago, but I was never in San Francisco for the Hate Ashbury days. So I didn't I didn't I didn't do any interviews with any of them. To tell you the truth. Um, I would I would be kind of interested to do you know to uh, do an interview with Jazz Joplin or something you know. The only one that I ever remember doing uh, of of that ilk uh, uh, to any appreciable extent was I did uh, all of the Grateful Dead except for Pigpen at one time, uh, and I had a studio in New York that was used by Barry Gray the rest of the week, and he used to get like five or six people in the studio to interview and they will all sit at these little tables in, in a semicircle and then he would sit on you know at a desk on one end and they would do the shows from there you look in there and there'd be people like bobby kennedy and so on you know well what my well, friend barry was his doorman at uh, wnca yeah and and uh, so was another friend of mine too uh yeah. who i still know Anyway, so uh, let me continue. So what happened was is that they, uh, I still have the, I have the tape of it here. Somebody found a copy 
of the wow. interview. And I, uh, 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 they all sat around in, in a semicircle, each at a different desk. And as we started the show, they started to light up joints. Now, let me tell you a little preface to this story because I had a long talk with the lawyers at WMCA and I said, you know, there are a lot of my guests who have a tendency to want to get high when they do the show. <laughs> I said, what is our responsibility if they want to light up a joint in the studio? And they, say, he, they said to me, you don't have any responsibility at all. Uh, just as long as you don't smoke it yourself. In other words, if they light up and start smoking, it's not your responsibility to tell them to stop or anything else, but you just can't. If they were to pass the joint to you, you can't do anything about it. So I said, okay, that's cool. I understand, you know, and it makes a lot of sense to me. And, the same as drinking on the air, right? Uh, drinking on the air would be slightly yeah, would, would be slightly different, I think, in a way. Uh, but anyway, so uh, they said no. So you just do it that way, and uh, you'll you'll be fine. So knowing this, all of a sudden, these six people are all lighting up joints, <laughs> right? Hi, and they then start blowing it in my direction. So you're getting a contact eye. And by the end of the hour, I was like, I was literally almost leveled on the floor. Because these guys yeah. didn't smoke, you know, pussy pot. These guys smoked the real heavy stuff. And uh, so, oh, I, so I can actually say that one of the interviews I did, I got high with the Grateful Dead. Okay? So, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Kevin. No, I was just putting my thumbs up. You're gonna need a I, thumbs uh, up. Photographed the Grateful Dead uh, tribute band called the Dark Star Orchestra uh, about two months ago, and uh, so that doesn't count uh, as being the Grateful Dead. No, it okay, doesn't. it doesn't even begin to count as the Grateful Dead. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So that must have been well. Pigpen was alive then. Yeah. So it must have been uh, early '70s. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it had to be. Well, well, he had died been, in I, 72, I believe it was. Really? Then this had to be, I think maybe I did these shows. This could be like 72, 71. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, start, I started at WMCA, I think, in 1969. So, uh, yeah, it could have been. Yeah, easily. Uh, but, no, Pigpen just didn't make it. So, uh, but He was probably getting drunk. Everybody else was there. Jerry was there and you know, Kreitzman and all those people. Um Cool. So that's that's one of my memories, I guess. You know, um, but you know, I I I know less about myself than Damien does now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems as though you you um, you do know a great deal about my life, and and more so since you've come in close contact with it, in close proximity to it. Yes. Well, see. I just I discovered you when I was young and impressionable. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I you know I. So I've this all must come as a grave disappointment to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is kind of fulfilling. Uh, 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 you know, um, I'm kind of living your life vicariously. Yeah. Um, oh wait a minute, because I'll never actually get to do any of this stuff. Yeah. But oh, here's a picture. Yeah. Here's a picture of Alex in a studio with John Lennon and Yoko Ono in a frame, you know, and I'm like, man, that is just awesome as hell. That's cool there. Oh, did, is there one? That is. Yes. It, yeah, I have that. The frame. And then um, you'll be getting that, too. Don't worry. Um, you've got this great artwork, this piece of art that I brought with me, of course, you know, because I brought it all. But this great piece of art that somebody probably made for you. And it's a silhouette of you. Taken from oh, a photograph. Oh, that is that. Out of wood. Oh, that was made in 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 New York City. That was I can't remember the guy's name now. And it's in front of red canvas, so it's like this wood silhouette, and it's just like it, really, it, really it's, cool. It's, it got a yellow background or an orange background, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like a pro. It's like almost like a silhouette of me. This right. was a guy by the name Migs Burroughs, I think was his name, and he was an artist, and he wanted to do a picture of me so he could add me to his repertoire, so to speak. Do you, in fact, John may remember that picture because if he ever came to my apartment in New York City, it was hanging on the wall. Do you remember that, John? 
sort of. Yeah, I mean, you had a bunch of interesting things on the wall, but I'm trying to remember that it, one. This was a big if I saw it, I probably would go, I, oh, yeah. I put it one. in a place where people, they would, it was right in the back of the couch. So when people were sitting mm -hmm. on the couch, they wouldn't be staring at my picture. <laughs> no, you <laughs> would put it in a place where you would stare at your picture all the because time. Because <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's huge, right, D Damien? Yes, it's quite big. Yeah, it, it, it probably... I will, not nothing you would want to ship. Let me put it that way. And, and nothing. Yeah, no, there's there's a few things that you're gonna have to drive home. Yeah, I'm gonna have to <laughs> have to drive home to get. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that you should. Um, I think that you should slip Will Durst some money and and tell him to rent a car and uh, drive on out to come visit you in New York. Yeah, something like that. I the thing you is, know, you, I got to tell you something. He he found something though. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't know if you, there's any way you can show it, but uh, he found it. No, it's the other room. Yeah, and it is. It was a. You thought it was a phonograph table, right? That it, right. it might have held a phonograph, and you show you sent it to me, and I went, "Wow, I'm glad he saved that." You see, there was a desk that he left behind that my parents used. I don't know. I was a piece of shit. Okay, but this thing. Was it's gorgeous. A, I could never have left it behind. It's too gorgeous. It's gorgeous, and <laughs> and it and girlfriend says she's willing to pay to have it shipped out here. Just let's find out how we're going to do it and get somebody who knows how to ship this I kind of thing. But it is. Well, I mean, let me let me hold on a second. So it's a. Uh, how do we describe it? It's it's a. It's a cabinet. Okay, mm -hmm. basically, but it's got rounded edges and so on. And you open it up, and there are these little shelves and what right. it was was where my father kept all his sheet music for violin oh wow uh, and so is a sheet music uh, uh keeper or whatever you want to call it you yeah know? Was there there's two holes in the top and that's why i figured it was a phonograph stand because there's two little holes in the top where you might send speaker wires out but it makes sense if it was a music holder that Probably, those holes might be for the little things to put a stand right there. Either that or the holes might have been there so that it uh, air could air. escape out of there and not, uh, you know, let it mold or do anything else. Yeah. But, my, but yeah. I do remember that there's no music in there because my mother gave the music to a music school, to a, some, some university or whatever. Uh, what kind of wood... What kind of wood can you remember that was? I don't know what it's kind a, of wood. It, it's a very, it's a cherry color. I don't know if it's a stained cherry or if it's actual cherry, but it's it's a kind of a cherry, not cherry quite wood. cockney. Yeah. There's, cherry wood? There's a, sort of there's, like... there's a service that FedEx has. It's a ground uh, service where you can take a four foot by four foot pallet and you can go up about four feet high and as long as it fits on there, you can ship it just about anywhere for two hundred dollars. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, there are probably several ways to do this, you know. Well, uh, yeah, no, a pallet is probably the way we're going to have to go. Yeah, um, it is small enough I could conceivably wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it in bubble wrap and then put a box around that. But the shipping, I mean, it's very. I, heavy. I would prefer that you were to use somebody a little more professional to package it because they know how to package it. And also, if they're the people doing the shipping, then they're responsible for it too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the, ne the neon sign too. you sent me did a great job of packing it, but it still broke. Uh, the uh, the base broke a little bit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you it, go to uh, one of these uh, crate services. Yeah, They'll build a little crate around it. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, or uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, well, or just, 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 when you get time, there's no rush, but when you get a chance, take a, a, a look around and see who, who does this sort of thing. And Where are you at, Damien? You're up in Petaluma, right? Yeah. Santa, Santa Rosa. Rosa. Okay, Santa yeah. Rosa, yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing that if I ordered it from Amazon, they would ship it to me. <laughs> You know, and it would get here okay. Yeah. You know. Well, the big, yeah, the big cross-country moving companies will do that, too, if they have extra room on a big on a cross-country trip, which sometimes they do because there's a lot of New York to California and back things. Yeah. I was able to ship some stuff of my dad's out to my sister in Houston by that doing that. And uh, it, was, it wasn't 
super well, expensive. Well, girlfriend, girlfriend likes. Eight, you know, as long as you don't girlfriend need it likes quick, old you know. old furniture, old wood type furniture and stuff. Uh, and uh, I showed her this, and I said, "Do you want this?" I said, "Because I, you know, I can't afford to ship it out, but if you want to have it shipped out, we can do it." And she looked at it for one second and said, "Absolutely." You yeah, know, it's, I mean, it's, it's it's that gorgeous. You're like, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you can get a uh, uh, what do you call it? Container and put everything in it, into the container, wrap it, put it in the container, and ship it that way. Yeah, that's a big. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. Even if you got a twenty foot container. All, all I'm saying uh, is, is I don't want this thing to get here as, uh, as, as wood for the fireplace. You know, I want to, I want it to get here in one piece. Sawdust. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful piece. But anyway, I really thank Damien. Damien, like Damien went over there and cleared that place out. And I, I, I think I mentioned this last night when I first moved into that. Storage room, which is what about uh, what did I say it was something like fifteen by twenty or something like that? It's huge. It's a ten by fifteen. Ten by fifteen. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. It was one hundred and thirty-eight dollars a month. Hey, why not? You know. Uh, and plus, I'll be back to California soon to pick it all up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody says who rents a storage locker. Fourteen yeah. years later, you own the place. <laughs> well, well, here, fourteen years later, that hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Every now and then, they would like raise the price. They wouldn't write me and say they. They never wrote me once to tell me they were raising the price, Damien, or that here's the increase for this year or whatever. Here's so, your thirty-day notice. Yeah. So they kept raising it while I wasn't looking, and because I've got, I'm paying for it on uh, uh, f what what fast pay or whatever those things are. Pay, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, they just charged it, you know, and all of a sudden I'm looking at the latest thing online and it said I paid $341 last month for that Ouch. same space, right? Well, wait a minute, hold on. Here's what Damien did and didn't know he was doing it. Next month, the price was going to go to 367 So, Damien, yeah. what is the normal price for a uh, 10 by 15 in your uh, establishment? Well, I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you that a down, uh, ground floor 10 by 20 drive up unit uh, would run about uh, 397. Mm. So um, that, you know, a 10 by 15 upstairs for that for that unit is ridiculous, totally ridiculous. And and well, you didn't first of all, you didn't need a unit that that was it was that big. Yeah. You know, if you're willing to stack all the way to the top of the unit, you can save a lot of money by getting into a smaller unit. And that's what I that's what I did. These two units that I put you in are crammed to the gills. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it should be. You should be maximizing your space. But if we have to get in there to get stuff, we can move stuff out and oh, of course. find yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, uh, it, yeah, so I mean, it's not that if I if I came there, I want to start looking for some stuff. I could just probably yes. find it pretty easy. Yeah. And, and plus, yes. I it, plus I usually have wanted things to be uh, humidity controlled, which the place I was at was. But you said you've got me in a basement or something, or under some stairs where it's always cool. Yeah, it's like a cave. I mean, our, 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 our building is concrete, so you're basically in a little concrete cave, and the temperature just really never varies at all. Yeah. Okay, good, because that, you know, tapes are very precious that way, you know. Yeah. And if you, uh, like my, Gary, my business manager, said, oh, I, got, I know a guy's got a place out and blah, 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 and I went and saw it, and it was like a, it was like a trailer. And, mm -hmm. you know, during the summer, it would get, terribly right. hot in there and i said we can't do this because my tapes would by now would be absolutely unusable yeah. right right uh, well this you won't have to worry about that here you know yeah, yeah. but um I'll, I'll tell everybody who's listening the same thing i told alex the other day on the phone and that is the it's the it's it's the entire point of the storage industry they're gambling on you doing exactly what alex did put your stuff in a facility put yourself on auto payment and then get about it for 10 20 30 years and uh, next thing you know you've you've handed them 15 20 grand over the course of the storage and you are never ever going to use this stuff ever again you've got it in storage you know very few people 
use storage, you know, for for like a garage or you know, in and out kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, when they actually utilize the space for stuff like that. Most most people they put it in there, they forget about it. It's out of sight, out of mind. You know, you just it's on oh, yeah. automatic payment. You don't even have to call and pay your bill. So I my best pay. advice, well, my best advice to everybody is. Do not get a storage unit. And this is coming from somebody who runs their own facility. Just yeah. don't. A I got an 8 Run by away. 10. <laughs> I got an 8 by 10 and I put my Harley in it. And then when I want to ride, I go there, park the car, grab the bike, and, and go. That's a total legit use for for a storage facility. Yeah, but you're, you're taking the stuff out. I think what, what, what uh, Damien is saying here is very true. I mean, I had to put my stuff somewhere and I was coming to New York. Now, I didn't know I would wind up staying in New York. And now my stuff is on that side of the country, and I'm on this side of the country. And do I want to ship it all out, or am I going to put it? To begin with, girlfriend got rid of her storage locker. Bravo. You know why? how she got rid of her storage locker? She moved oh, all that know. shit into this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so now there's no room for me to put any of my shit in this apartment. Yes, well, yes. You get one of those 25 room ones, uh, you know, next yeah, door. Yeah, right. John? Well, no, I have a, I had a, a bunch of, of boxes of stuff from the old recording studio I used to work at. And a lot of it's interesting, historical tapes, things like that. And I put them in a storage space in Brooklyn, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that was relatively near the, the subway so I could get there if I needed anything. But I never did. For years, I like six, seven years I had it in there. And it went up a little. It was like a, I can't remember. It wasn't all that much a month, but it was a, it was a decent amount. And all of a sudden, every we get an email saying, "You have a month and a half to get all your stuff out because we've sold the building, and they're going to make luxury apartments out of it." And this is a old, thick brick building with small windows. You know, it's it. I mean, really, <laughs> it's going to be the most soundproof apartment complex you've ever ever dealt with because it really is. Uh, you know, you wouldn't hear any outside noise because yeah. it was it, it's an old building, probably from like the 1910s or something in downtown Brooklyn. And uh, now my uh, storage space is my hallway. <laughs> Basically, I've got wow. a stack of, of, of boxes of of reel to reel tapes and and books and and, and <laughs> well, LP records and historical. I've got some good comedy records, by the way. Like, you know, Nichols and May and Bob Newhart and stuff. Yeah, I want to get to those and start running them off on my uh my you know, into like mp3 files or something definitely i should you know get that available to friends who are like me and i know you are well are, i have i have about 100 L I, I have about 100 lps that i kept of uh of comedy and, and i think real to reels i have i have 10 inch i have 10 and a half inch uh, uh real to reel deck here so you I, know, that's you, one you of know, my you know what the, pro the, what the problem is for instance i have videos there and i don't know you don't know whether you found it or not because it's probably in one of the boxes but i have like a lot of like uh remember uh eight millimeter uh, videotape mm -hmm. videotape not eight not millimeter a, well, yeah. not Bill, eight. I, I stored a bunch of porn for you i had a garage in the city when yeah. you were living in sausalito and i had about 10 of your boxes uh when i had that garage and it was all filled with eight millimeter porn and stuff like that. I never had eight millimeter oh, porn. Wait yeah. a minute. I never. And, I when never. I, when I had to give up the garage, I brought them all over to your place in Sausalito <laughs> and put them in the living room. I, I, so. I, I to begin with, I never had eight millimeter porn. <clears throat> yeah. yeah but, but anyway, yeah. forget about that eight millimeter. I'm talking about the eight millimeter tape. So yeah. I mean, Video unless tape. I find the player for these things. The ability to play them is, I'm, well, I could probably go on eBay and probably find a, a, a Super 8 yeah. millimeter yeah. Uh, deck. But uh, uh, you I go think back. I did you, find a Super 8 deck. Huh? I think I did find a Super 8 deck. Did you really? Now that you've said Super 8, yeah. yes, I do believe I saw a deck that said Super 8 on it. Oh, really? Do you know where it is? And, uh, well, you know, I mean, yeah. you don't have that much stuff. Yeah, but so, anyway, um, I shot that Super 8 for a while, you know, and then uh, then I started shooting Super VHS. But now I have Super VHS right. machines here. But you go back. I mean, you ask John. You go back in time and you try to find places like you know. If I want to go play my reel-to-reel tapes, 
If I wanted to suddenly buy a reel-to-reel -reel deck, how much are they today, uh, uh, They can John? be pretty expensive. Uh, yeah. And, the, yeah. and if you go on eBay or something, you never know if they're a good quality. They say, well, it runs. You know, that sort of thing. Because yeah. I was looking to get a second uh, uh, tape deck. I have one that it, it's it's not in the best shape, but it, it runs three different speeds, including 15 IPS, figuring that maybe some pro guys would want to have some of their old stuff. You know that the, the the music stuff transferred. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, if I were to track, if, if I were to you know, want to do my whole life, I would have to have all kinds of equipment that no longer really exists, or if it does exist, the price it's on it is enormous. Unit. What? It's what? in your storage unit. It's in my storage unit. Well, you said you found your storage unit is like a museum of old tech. You said you <laughs> you found the history of computers in my in my storage locker. Yeah, basically, you know, I mean, we, we, okay, so we know that there's that giant Panasonic video camera. Yeah, right? but you know what that was? It's not that but it's that's a, a super VHS. It, it's a super VHS, and you would put the, the, the tape in the deck. I mean, it was like the right. all in one deal. That was right. before they came out with a smaller one. You had a camera at one time that was a camera and a player, and you could, uh, you'd separate the two. Well, no, that, and, that was the original. That was, on a strap. Yeah, that was the original reel to reel. No, this was, a, this was like, it wasn't VHS, and it wasn't beta. Uh, maybe it was VHS, uh, but uh, what happened was you had the camera. The camera had a cord. It plugged into. You know, I you think take, I think uh, that had to maybe be a reel to reel because I CA. Huh? Yeah, I remember the reel to reel one you had. Yeah. Yeah, you remember the reel to reel one. Oh, oh I, yeah. I remember your reel to reel. You had it in New York, and yeah. I was amazed by it. I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah. In in your New York apartment, you had these three shelves that had uh, like cement blocks uh, holding them up. And you had it on the on the third shelf up. It was the top shelf, I think. You had this reel to reel, and you were and you were playing like a cartoon on it. And I had never seen anything like that. I was amazed. To, to, yeah, know. yeah. Now, those were black and white, and they were called yeah. porta packs, is what Sony called them, the porta pack. Mm -hmm. And you had a cam, big ass camera that you carried with it. And uh, I, I tried to schlep that to Europe once. That was a that was a bear. Oh man, you know. When I think about the fact that uh, I can, uh, hold on a second, where is it? I can, uh, I, can, I can shoot 4K video with this, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. I, I go, uh, I can do it with my iPhone. As a matter of fact, I shot a whole video with my iPhone once as a joke, uh, as a, a try in, in 4K, and it was terrific, you know? So I remember we would, we would, we would cart these, this, uh, Three uh, three quarter inch video cassette deck. deck that was about the size of a typewriter. Right, and we had the uh, camera. shoebox size cameras and a thousand watt Lowell lights that you'd hang up, you know, in our, on on on, on yeah, tripods I mean, I, and we, things, uh, just to be able to get any sort of indoor recording. We couldn't record in the light you're in now. Probably it would be it would be it would be dim. You know, we you had to flood everything with light, which was of course a problem when you went to some place like a swingers club where nobody wanted to be seen and <laughs> you put the lights on yeah like, but you needed that light otherwise you didn't get a picture by the way brian's up there he's driving home uh hey, there it's very, it's very late night. <laughs> yeah very and, late night yeah uh anyway uh what, what i was going to say was that that uh back in the day when john and i were shooting midnight blue you had to do this with a crew you couldn't do it yourself oh, yeah. you know now I can do it all by myself, you know. But uh, in, in those days, it was, uh, it was, it, it was a bear. It really was. And I had and a whole crew in back carry, of me. I had the other guy to carry the tripod for it. <laughs> I don't know if you heard well, me. You had, a box, you had a box. You had a box of the tripods. You had, the, and also had the low, the lights, the the low lights the, yeah. in there. And then you had another box that was the uh, that with a couple of cassettes if you needed them, and the cassette. You know itself the the the, the recorder which was a yeah. box in itself and then you had a couple at least one I mean, I think we, when we were, did remotes we pretty much just used one camera because we I even had we had two cameras I think but we weren't going to take both of them you know yeah <laughs> we, no we you know I plug yeah. in one into the camera so and, the remotes and, were all pretty uh pretty much just a one camera thing but well, unless you were outdoors you had no you know you need you couldn't record with just one person you had. I mean, you could carry the thing, but it was it was it was it was terrible. 
Um, and yeah. anywhere indoors, you needed these bright lights, which for the nature of a lot of the stuff we were recording probably wasn't the, the most conducive to to interviews and other things where they're like, oh, geez, well, it wasn't uh, it so wasn't tight. intimate. And so people were frightened of it because of its lack of intimacy. Uh, I remember we shot it. I remember we shot at a at at, at, a, at a at a gay um, there was a gay uh, uh, movie theater and and they danced the one you were there dancing around. And oh, yeah, that's the one I wound up playing All before. The that's the one I moved, that, moved that, back. That's the tape I wound up. One of the things I wound up showing to the committee yeah. in Washington, D.C. Do you remember do you remember me going down to the congressional committee in Washington? Mm-hmm. Well, I remember I was the one that was left with the. I had to. You guys all went in to, to record. I guess the guy, uh, the owner of the theater, and a couple other people in the office. Yeah. And what was? And I was left to sit in the back of the theater, guarding the rest of the equipment, while there was a while a gay porn film was on. First one I'd ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> whoa, this is interesting. And then you know, and then of course when they started to do some of the, we had the, the people that were going to dance for us, and then you came out and you put up those big lights, and anyone that was sitting close, all these guys in their, in, literally in their raincoats, some of them, would all start sort of moving to the back of the theater, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere where there wasn't light. You know? By the way, push by the by the way, by, by the way, it, it, he never got paid hazardous duty pay, but he should oh, have. No. But no, we yeah. that we we shot that uh, that burlesque show, uh, and I put mm-hmm. it to the music of Babyface, mm-hmm. and they're dancing around, and I that was part of the demo reel that I took down to the congressional committee in Washington yeah. D.C. for them to see to see what we did on Midnight Blue that it wasn't so horrible. And right. uh, why did you do a gay uh, expose? Why why uh, was it because you were dealing with Congress uh, congressmen and you figured that no no that, we, we know, because you know, I considered it if if you want the total truth these were a bunch of guys butt ass naked dancing around to the uh, to the song Baby Face and it was a disco version in those days <laughs> Baby Face you got the nah, nah, nah. and I thought it was hilarious. And I thought it was a it was an example of our sense of humor, and so I, uh, along with a few other things that we showed them, showed them that. And as a matter of fact, Martin uh, Van Dierlem, what was his first name? Yeah, uh, c- congressional. Uh, the guy was running the committee. Running the committee. Uh, uh, he he, as we were walking back, said that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. He said, I, that is just absolutely just the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Good going, kid. And then he gets up on the stand and says, that's the most horrible, degrading thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going, welcome to fucking Washington, D.C. <laughs> you know, home, home of the double standard. Just cocksucker he was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Alex, what, would say. What you, Alex, when you guys put up the lights, do you guys use a battery? Battery? You know, no, we hope we didn't blow fuses. Right, and we did blow a few occasions. So some of the fuses did go in some places. Because these things were cool. these, these, these were all use a battery or some sort, you know. No, there's, there's no, some strokes. These are no, yeah, these today. Are photo, today like, you could probably today like, you could big. today you could probably use batteries, but in those days oh, yeah. we were using these these Lowell lights were quartz halogens. Big hot ones. I mean, yeah. big oh, hot ones. Okay, yeah. now mine then. Yeah, <laughs> you got to remember this is back in the Stone Age of video, okay? You know. They're about they're about this size, you yeah, know, like the size of a, of the thing, you know, long and thin, and you 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 hang them up, you know, and and aim them wherever you wanted to aim them. This we was like, a I think this was a particular brand they made called Totalite. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember my parents had a, 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 a an eight millimeter uh, a, a camera, mm-hmm. and they had a bar of lights with floods on them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Did that attach to the top of the camera or something? No, or no, no. It stood. You either separate? held it. Uh, yeah. It was maybe three, four feet across, and it had uh, half a dozen or uh, about eight uh, uh, big floodlights on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could probably oh, put sure. a piece of steak on there and fry. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, they, they, the oh, they got hot. Yeah, definitely, they got hot. <laughs> that that was incredibly hot stuff, you know. And uh, 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 and John was always the utility guy, so you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I got to I got to occasionally do some recording, but uh, or camera. I usually either 
with the with the headphones listening to the audio coming in, make sure it was okay, you know, or I was the one <laughs> left was, was, over was there anything, making sure that all the crap was 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 in the corner, nobody was stealing it. Was, not, was, was there not, anything that we that's, ever that's shot, cool. John? Was there anything we yep. ever shot for Midnight Blue that you said to yourself, you know, this is so disgusting, maybe I better quit? <laughs> How many times? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Though I think I told you, I've I've, I've written a couple of of sort of silly short stories based on a couple of the more absurd things we ever did and one is really a mixture of the two snm theatrical things we did mm -hmm. uh mistress roseanne herself who actually was pretty could be you know pretty uh that was imposing. one of that was one of my other great moments of mm -hmm. video where uh, she's got this guy hung up stra and is is whipping the shit out of his ass Mm. Oh, and geez. I and I put it to the music of Ringo Starr singing, babe, uh, is, is singing, you always hurt the one you love. You love right. <laughs> right. But the other one was that so-called uh, S&M theater group where, yes. where there were three or four people. And it right. was like this 300 and 400 pound guy. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and and nobody could act worth anything. Was this you, the one where, it, where we did you, the chicken? You made it very where, where serious. He, where, you edited it. To the yeah. to the Bernard Herman Psycho soundtrack. I don't so remember that really one. Was I remember, it, but it was so silly. I remember the other theater group that actually did a a, a thing where where she was a woman and he was a chicken. Oh, well, that was that was uh, yeah, that was Barry Farber's friends. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leal, Leal Lowndes, Leal, Leal, Leal Lowndes, and Chip, you, Chip yeah. and Leal. I remember them. Yeah, I, and, I, I actually want to write. I want to write another stories are based around that too but these are here's just sort of that was know, one of my best that was based one, on just the, the that silliness was, of that time and and what people thought was that, that was, was one of really my that was important. one of my best it was one of my best videos <laughs> from the great. standpoint that the best part of it were the chickens i shot we went down to this place in chinatown where they have live chickens and then you have the heads cut off and take them home warm right and we shot all these chickens and i use that as the opening i love that opening just you know but uh, I also I also got to sit with like I guess the tape deck in a room that also had the uh, machine that killed the chickens. Oh, so every so no, often I remember they, that someone would come in and 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 throw a chicken head down in the air. <laughs> yeah, there, there was this machine they had. Oh, oh and you yeah, did, and they just put that they put the head yeah, in this thing. It was like a funnel. The head, they cut it off and, and it drained the blood. It, then it, they had another thing with like with like rubber fingers that would take all the uh, that would that like like a washing machine with rubber fingers it would take all the uh, the feathers off the yeah. chicken I mean that chicken that chicken go, went that from live I, li put any, you know, so that was where I was that chicken went from live to wrapped in like a minute oh. and a half yeah I mean you got fresh chickens at this yeah I it was near it. Chinatown there was a lot of uh, you know I don't know if it's just Asian but some of the chickens were absolutely some of the various versions, you know, whoever, you know, uh, species, they're gorgeous. My, I mean, why would you want to kill my, these My things? last like, shoot know. ever, though, was at an S&M club. And there mm -hmm. was this uh, woman. Oh, we're almost run out of time here. Uh, yeah, I'll just say this quickly. There was this woman, and she had this other woman she was beating the shit out of. And when we, <laughs> we, when we went in, she was just kind of beating her a little bit. When we turned on the lights and started shooting, she started beating the shit out of her. Mm -hmm. And I just told, I don't know if you were there, I told everybody, turn off the lights. We're going to stop shooting because all she's doing is she's just beating the shit out of this woman because the cameras are on. And I, no, and I, I, and I had us turn off the cameras and I said, that's my last shoot, guys. I'm out of here. I, you know, when I, when I see somebody brutalizing somebody else for the sake of our cameras, I'm through with this project. It's, it's time for it to be over, you know, and that's mm -hmm. when I quit it. Amazing stories, aren't they, Damien? Sure um, are. <laughs> you said the last night about me, and then I got to go. That you said, you said I, you feel I had lived an amazing life, and it never kind of. I think I said interesting, a very interesting, life. interesting oh, life. You said, you said and it, it, and it, it never. Oh wait a minute, I got to turn off the sound up here, otherwise that's going to go over the air here. Okay. And and, 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 and and wait a minute. And now it's coming from somewhere else too. Where else are oh. we? Where else are we getting the sound from? I have no idea. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second, folks. Let me let me try to. Uh, uh, no, I, well, I got rid of that anyway. 
I don't know. Let me, yeah, you hear let that? Let me try it. I don't know where that sound is coming from, folks. Well, I, oh, the music sound. Anyway. Huh? Oh, well. I hear uh, the music. It's time. What? It's time. It's time. Yeah, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll just bring up this thing, and then uh, then I can play the uh, the actual uh, closing theme uh, here. Say goodbye, everybody, because I won't, you won't be able to talk over this. Uh, Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for having joined us tonight. Thank you, Damien, for helping us. Wait a minute, I lost the music again. Uh, where is it? I'm, I wish I could find Well, I forget it. I won't use music tonight to finish off the show. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it, you know? And uh, we'll see you again, hopefully, again tomorrow night. Same time, same station, okay? Anyway, that's it. Uh, let me get rid of everybody here. Boom. There they go. They're gone. I wonder where where is this sound anyway, coming it. from? I wonder. Uh, it's it's not. Oh, there I see where it's probably. There it is. There we go. I just killed it. See, see, I can do it. I can do it when I want to. Then I can play the theme. Um, there we go. And say, oh God. Such a good show tonight, though. Thank you, Damien, for, for those photographs and everybody for their memories of stuff. And, and John, because you were there with me with the Midnight Blues gazorchness. Uh, I got to go. There's a show coming on after me. It's called The Intersection. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>